in attendance this morning. Uh, the board would like to welcome you to the Board of Public Works and Safety meeting for March 24th, 2022. Can I get a roll call, please? Here. 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 Uh, any conflict of interest statements to the board? No, sir. Thank you. Approval of the minutes of the meeting of March 17th, 2022. You good? Yep. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> uh, matters, or, excuse me, no bid openings this morning. Matters from department heads or their representatives. the agenda we're good mr. button thank you item 7 uh, any other department head okay item a correspondence received from chief of police William short requesting the following officers receive FTO specialty pay as of March 9th 2022 Ryan Gleason Timothy Kreischer Lindsey Fritz, Andrew Webb, Matthew Zambala, Amanda Early, Michael Ciccatelli? Ciccatelli. Ciccatelli, thank you. Spencer Lemons and Cody Sparks. Additionally, requesting Officer Albert Hewlett relinquish his FTO specialty pay due to reassignment. Officer Timothy Schultz resigned as an FTO and shall no longer receive FTO specialty pay as these adjustments adjustments become effective March 22nd, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve Chief Short's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item B, correspondence received from Fire Chief Jeffrey Smith recommending the following promotions and reassignments. EMT 2P, David Boltima to be promoted to the rank of EMT 1P, paramedic and EMT-1, Xavier Becerra, to be reassigned to the rank of EMT-2, retroactive, March 6, 2022, submitted for approval. Make a motion to approve Chief Smith's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item C, correspondence received from Mr. Dean Button, Capital Improvement Board, requesting. $25,875 of CIP funding be allocated for engineering services to perform the PASER rating inspection by Nice Engineering and corresponding proposal submitted for approval. Good morning to the board. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, so this is a biennial uh, review of all of our streets. Uh, we have to prepare a report to the Indiana Department of Transportation uh, every year to qualify for community crossings. Two years ago, during the pandemic, uh, we had our we did it in-house. Uh, we certainly, with all the construction, we just don't have the time. So we asked Nice for a uh, quote, or I'm sorry, a, a proposal on the project. And uh, the the it was uh, the, the funding allocation has been approved by the city controller uh, as well as the mayor and the capital improvements board. So I'd ask for your approval of both the funding allocation and the agreement with Nice Engineering for $25,875. What does PASER stand for, from my knowledge? I'd pavement, evaluation, pavement system evaluation rate. Okay, I think is okay. What it is. It's, it, it's a standard, it's, a, it's sort of an industry standard way of measuring the condition of a street and the a subsequent repair. So if it's a seven, it's a crack seal. If it's a two, it's a complete reconstruction, okay. right? So Base is zero, zero, or sorry, one to 10, 10 being a brand new street, one being the worst condition you could find. So it's pretty simple, straightforward, but we, we basically go around and update all of our, all of our street with the, with the asset management rating. Okay, uh, for the record, the controller has signed off on uh the, the request as well as the mayor and of course uh, Mr. Button. I'll make a motion then to approve Mr. Button's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item D, correspondence received from Dean Button requesting $17,462.24 of CIB funding be allocated for design services for a new retaining wall 
for the intersection improvements to Michigan Street and Indianapolis Boulevard with first group engineering and corresponding supplemental agreement number two submitted for approval. This is the uh, new federally funded uh, in part uh, 8020 northbound Indianapolis Boulevard right turn lane onto Michigan. We did a uh, well Lear seating did a traffic study a couple of years ago and we determined that that was a weakness in the intersection is uh, right turn movements. In fact, there's a corresponding westbound left turn movement to go south on the boulevard that the state's going to be working on. But we uh, applied to NERPSI and got federal funding for that. During the course of the design, we had, we in, in the next item, we need to take property from Echo Services in order to widen the right of way on the north, or uh, sorry, on the south approach to uh, to Michigan on the boulevard. Um, in order to do that and to minimize the take of the property to affect, that could eventually or, or purposefully affect their parking area, which, which would limit their ability to park, we have to build a retaining wall to, to keep the parking area in the place where it is now. Otherwise, we're, the, pro the cost of the property take would go up because we're affecting their when ability. When you talk parking, you're talking Echo Services? Yeah. Their parking lot there? Their parking lot right on the on the corner. So so we're not affecting their parking lot if we build a retaining wall on the north and mostly uh, west side of the parking lot. Okay. So, so we don't affect that. Um, if we did affect that, the property take would be much bigger and the impact to the property owner would be much greater and the cost would be higher. And so in order to, to limit that, we're, we're requesting the design of a retaining wall to be added to the project. Uh, engineering is 100% funded by the city as, as well as the right-of-way acquisition, but the construction and the construction observation for the project is funded 80-20 with federal, federal funds. I'd ask, uh, well, I'd, um, the, the green, sorry? No, he asked guiding questions, that's all. The, uh, the funding allocation has been uh, signed off by the city controller, the mayor, and the capital improvements board. And so I'd ask for your approval of the yeah. funding allocation and the uh, agreement with first group engineering. Yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah. Make a motion then to approve the funding allocation and the agreement with first group engineering uh, per Mr. Button's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Item E. Correspondence received from Dean Button requesting $53,350 of CIB funding be allocated for the purpose of acquiring the right of way from Echo Services to create a new northbound right turn lane at Michigan Street and Indianapolis Boulevard submitted for approval. Following up on that, this is strictly the funding allocation that was approved by the Capital Improvements Board and prior to that, the city controller and the mayor uh, to actually acquire the property. Um, there is, uh, Within the next 30 days, we will receive a claim for that payment to the property owner. This is a negotiated settlement for the parcel and a cost to cure of some fence that needs to be replaced. Uh, so I'd ask your approval of funding uh, allocation. Okay, then I will make a motion then to approve Mr. Button's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item F, correspondence received from Dean Button requesting $59,750 of CIB funding be allocated for the drainage improvements of 50 to 169th Street, I take it, right? Yes, sir. Drainage improvement services with Rex Construction submitted for approval. This would be both the funding allocation uh, that was approved by the city controller, the mayor, and uh, the capital improvements board, as well as the um, uh, awarding the quote to the lowest uh, responsive quoter, Rex Construction. So we'd ask that you to approve both of those actions. Um, the board may recall uh, or may not recall in June of 2021, we uh, opened in this room at this meeting uh, quotes for the project. Uh, we notified uh, Rex Construction that we would like them to do the work, but no official action had been adopted by the Board of Public Works and Safety at that time. Rex has agreed to hold their price and improve the, um, the alley drainage problem that's been plaguing that area for some time. This is immediately behind the British Petroleum, BP 
parking or a gas Williams, station. Williams, uh, I, I care. Yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a, a problem, a drainage problem. The soil conditions don't uh, uh, allow for a French drain to be put in that location, so we're tying the sewer in. So I'd, I ask your approval uh, of both the funding allocation and the, uh, the quote from Rex Construction. Attached in the, uh, in the packet is um, the a breakdown of the quotes from uh, Nice Engineering as well as copies of the other quotes that were su significantly higher than the Rex, Rex okay. quote. Good, good, good. Okay. Then I will make a motion then to approve the funding allocation and award the uh, quote to the lowest responsible uh, quoter, as you, yeah. yes. uh, to, uh, to Rex Construction. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. you yes. We're, we're learning. You reciprocate. I reciprocate, yeah. All right. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Item G, correspondence received from Dean Button requesting 25,000 of CIB funding be allocated for general services with T.Y. Lane International Great Lakes, Inc. for NICD Westlake Quarter Assistance, South Hammond Parking, and Mr. This, is, this is going to be we're deferred? Asking, yes, we're asking for to be, to be deferred. Is there any length of time? I think probably we and I just need to meet okay. uh, regarding uh, the okay. agreement. Okay. So without that, I prefer it. Don't, don't set the date then. Don't set a date. A week, week is yeah. fine. Okay. Fine. We'll do it next week. Okay. Then I'll make a motion then to defer this to next week's meeting, which is uh, uh, March 31st. Yes. 2022. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item H, correspondence received from Dean Button requesting 1.0 million? Yes, sir. Of CIB funding be allocated for 2022 Hammond Overlay Program submitted for approval. Board will recall that uh, we have uh, op uh, recently opened bids for our annual uh, resurfacing program and has award the, awarded that contract to Milestone North. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first um, amount of funds that we can that the Capital Improvement Board has available to fund resurfacing. We normally refund, uh, fund resurfacing in the amount of about 2.4 million each year, but the amount that we had, that the Capital Improvements Board has available, we don't want to use up all that money now, so we're setting aside about a million to do the, the first so-called so round of resurfacings. Uh, we have a draft uh, list of uh, streets that we plan on resurfacing so far. Uh, and balance fairly well through all the districts. Um, you'll see another one of these funding allocations, hopefully in another 30 days. Uh, but this one is just for the million dollars that's been appro uh, approved by the city controller as well as the mayor and the Jeez, capital improvements board. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. Then I will then make a motion to approve uh, Mr. Button's request. I second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 <clears throat> Item I, correspondence received from Dean Button requesting the approval of the agreement with Axis Architecture and Interiors in the amount of $298,250 for the design of the fire stations number seven submitted for approval. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Button and I had a discussion with our uh, city controller regarding this just to confirm um, funding. Um, and uh, she related that the funding sources are a mixed use of the insurance payout from the damage of Station 5, um, ambulance fees, and gaming. Um, I can let the board know that um, that doesn't pro that probably won't cover the full amount of this contract, but that we are monitoring the work that's being performed by AXIS so that at, the, at a time we need to have them slow down or hold up because of funding, we can do that. So we feel pretty comfortable to request your approval based on the controller's um, message to Mr. Button and I. Okay. okay. Then I will then make a, a, a request, excuse me, a motion to approve Mr. Button's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Correspondence received from Second District Councilman Pete Torres requesting 34,000 of gaming funds be allocated for the financial contribution to the total cost of the license plate reader program LPR project submitted for approval. And I recall all, <coughs> all six districts con contribute, right? Correct? 
Um, or no? Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe Chief Long might be able to weigh in on this. I know that the new technology, I don't know if it hit every district, oh. but I know in the districts that okay. they're upgrading, they requested funding. So I, I guess, Mr. Margraf, I wouldn't know if it's all six, but I know the ones that it did hit, they're asking. Got it. There, okay. I don't know. There were two that That does not, make sense, though, more so. It does. There were two that had not still, but uh, so that's what we can talk exactly. about that. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is, uh, let's see, from Torres. Councilman Torres, yes. Okay, then I will make a motion then to approve uh, Mr. Torres' request. I second. Councilman Torres, sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item K, correspondence received from 4th District Councilman Bill Emerson Sr. requesting 34,000 of gaming funds be allocated for the financial contribution to the total cost of the license plate reader program LPR project submitted for approval. Uh, I will uh, make a motion to approve um, Councilman Emerson's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item L. Correspondence received from Dean Button recommending the approval for Gary Up Construction to proceed with the pedestrian road closure of the Little Calumet River Trail beginning on April 4th, 2022, and will be effective until November 18th, 2022, and recommending the approval for road closure on 171st Street between Wicker Avenue and Schneider Avenue beginning March 28th, 2022, for approximately 10 business days. Uh, two-part uh, action. First part is uh, Little Calumet River Trail. As you know, the city and the Little Calumet River Basin Development Commission is funding a new pedestrian bridge over Calumet Avenue uh, at the Little Cal River, right at the border with Munster. Uh, we need to close the trail uh, to access um, for that construction. It'll be for the entire duration of the project. Be the Pedestrians and bicyclists will not be allowed to get into the construction. So I guess that it's going to be closed at uh, what the tracks down by the river? Uh, probably the closer to where the Oxbow, uh, 177th, where the trail sort of approaches 177th. They won't be able to go past that location before it turns south again. Are we, are we talking Calumet Avenue or? this? We're, we're talking about a Calumet Avenue bridge that, go, you know, a bridge that goes over Calumet Avenue, but the trail, the bike trail right. that comes t from either direction mm -hmm. has to be closed. Mm -hmm. We'll close it at the Oxbow, right, where the, not, not. You're throwing me off with the Oxbow. I'm sorry. The, 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 the river meanders yes. over by what would be considered the Ted Muta property. Yeah. Where Ted Muta property okay. is. Yeah, I That's sort of an Oxbow in the river. It's not the Oxbow that we're all familiar with, so I apologize. Where that, ha where that occurs, the trail comes out to 177th and pedestrians would have to then okay. get on the roadway and go past the haunted house fireworks stand to come out. But even so, okay. we just need to restrict um, access and, and also on the Riverside Park side because they're gonna be working on that approach from the east to the bridge. Okay. That's part number one. Do you think yes. have additional, like some signage on the road that is now gonna be the bike trail and make sure Public Works has a street out there because it gets pretty gravelly. I can do that. I will. I think probably it'd be, because they can, you know, that curve is a little mm -hmm. bit stressful. You know, we have we have but we, cyclists yeah. and stuff on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can, I can okay. to take that to the, to the board. Okay, and 171st Street. Yes, sir. Worker? So this is a continuation of the Schneider storm sewer project. If the board recalls, there was a closure of Wicker uh, at 171st. And so we're just moving east. We're just bringing the pipe up to the, um, the north end of the project, and so we're just doing a road closure. Again, all notifications to people that might be affected will all be? Through the law department. Okay. The law department. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, then I will then make a motion to approve uh, Mr. Button's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on, there's got to be more. Yes. Correspondence received from Dean Button recommending the approval for advanced engineering services to temporarily restrict traffic on Summer Street 
between Columbia Avenue and Indianapolis Boulevard in relation to the geotechnical engineering study for the proposed roadway improvements. Another federal highway project the city's doing, Summer Street between Columbia and the, and the Boulevard. Uh, so we're doing geotechnical sampling, but boring corings of the street so that we do a, the proper pavement design. Uh, so it's just temporary restrictions on the road. So two, two lanes each way, so there's plenty of traffic. They'll just use flaggers to go around. We just wanted the, the board to know that this was going on and it, start, it could start as early as tomorrow. Okay. okay. Good. So the area you're talking about, two lane, is just west of Indianapolis Boulevard, right? Because when you get down further, it's... it's That's true. Lane, when you get down towards state, right, it yeah, gets narrower. It turns into one. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I will then make a motion to approve Mr. Button's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Item N, correspondence received from Lakeshore, Cal Ripken, Babe Ruth, requesting permission to hold their opening night parade on Friday, April 29, 2022, beginning at 6 p.m., and additionally requesting a Hamma police and or fire department escort. Um, Mr. Klein, anything to add? No, oh, I just asked for its approval. We are aware of it, and it's the same route every year, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then I will uh, make a motion then to approve uh, Lakeshore Cal Ripken's request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item O. Correspondence received from Joseph Wittig requesting his rental registration hearing presently set for March 31st, 2022 be rescheduled to April 7th, 2022. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'll make a motion then to approve uh, Mr. Wittig's re uh, request. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item P, correspondence received requesting rental registration hearings. Make a motion to set those hearings to April 7th, 2022. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item Q, request for advertising dates of March 31st, 2022 and April 7th, 2022 for the removal and replacement of lead impacted soil environmental remediation project. Phase but, two, phase two of our American Rescue Plan funded uh, remediation of the Robertsdale area along basically Lakeview uh, Avenue, um, so phase two. Um, we would ask that you also uh, authorize a bid date of, uh, bid opening date of April 21st. Um, so if you could include that in your motion. Uh, so this is just round, round two. We're gonna do 30 properties this round. Uh, there's $4 million uh, as a budget. Um, we're under a million so far for the first round, and uh, it's just a great project to, to get resolved. The mayor's pushed this. We're, we're doing things that no other community does, and that's getting you know lead-impacted soil properties remediated in, in a very expeditious manner. And so we appreciate your uh, consideration, approval of the advertising bid date. Okay, then I will make a motion then to approve the advertising dates of March 31st, 22 and, uh, 2022 and April 7th, 2022, and also the bid opening date of April 21st, 2022. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Thank you. Uh, matters from board members? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. <clears throat> New business, item A, resolution authorizing intergovernmental agreement with Hammond Port Authority regarding payment of invoices for design, engineering, and related services for the public works improvements at 129th Street and Calumet Avenue stormwater grant project and supporting agreement. Mr. President and Board, uh, good morning. Smith. This is, um, has to do with the uh, water that the standing water that occurs at 129th and Calumet. I think we're all aware of that. It's a problem. Uh, the engineering department was able to procure a grant in the amount of 900,000, of which uh, there's a match of 300,000 that I believe sanitary district is going to take care of. Uh, there's about 134 grand in design and engineering that Port Authority has graciously agreed to take care of uh, as their portion, because they obviously run 
a bunch of things up that way. And they passed the intergovernmental agreement on Monday. We would ask that the board uh, pass the resolution and also uh, then sign the intergovernmental agreement. And I'd request Linda to send Exhibit A back to, or at least one copy back to the Port Authority. And CC me, please. Thank you. And this is, I'm sorry, and this is just the usual IGA where um, uh, the claims are approved here, they go to port, they do the claims there, and then they pay it out of port. So all we're approving today, Kevin, is the uh, resolution itself? Uh, the resolution which gives the board the authority to also sign the uh, intergovernmental. Gotcha. So both. Okay. Okay, then I will make a motion then to approve the resolution uh, which uh, gives the board the, or the ability to sign the agreement. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item B, right of way permit six submitted for approval from the engineering department. Yes, please. Thumbs up. Okay. Make a motion then to approve the right of way permits. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item C, amusement device list submitted by the controller's office. to do those yeah okay. um, I will make a motion then to approve the amusement device list I second all those in favor aye. aye aye item D order to rescind and release order to demolish property at 20 222-23 it's got to be 24 Conkey Street order to rescind and release order to demolish property 222 okay. through 24 Conkey Street it is 24 yeah mm -hmm. Request its approval. They've uh, complied. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Then I will then make a motion to approve the order to rescind and release. I second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Garage sale permit submitted for approval. Oh, no, just antivirus. Yeah, it seems like you that every week, though. I don't know. We're good. We're good here. I think it must be Saturday and Sunday, I guess. Or wait, no, oh, it's Friday and Saturday. Yeah, it's just Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion then to approve the uh, garage sale permit. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item F. Rental registration for the properties located at 3320 175th and 6374 Maryland Avenue. 1324 170th and 3249 163rd, 3303 Kenwood, and 6743 Maryland, and 3642 173rd, and 3324 175th. Mr. Um, Maryland. If uh, the board would recall, these properties were managed by uh, Blueprint Capital uh, Investments. They first appeared on the agenda August 26th of 21. Uh, they were then continued or allowed to appear again on September 30th of 21 because a representative from Blueprint uh, called or wrote the next day stating that she was unable to make uh, that hearing due to COVID. And then uh, due to discrepancy versus of the properties being occupied in 2021, we reset the properties for a status date of October 21st, which no one appeared for. So the board has made a ruling um, on all these properties that are set for today. The first two were referred to Smith Sursick's office as they owed uh, four years each, uh, 2015, 16, 17, and 21 for uh, 6374 Maryland. And then 3320 175th Street was 2015, 2017, 2018, and 2021. So the first two properties um, on that list were referred to Smith Sursick for collections due to the number of years owed. The remainder properties, um, I did draft findings and decisions in the event the board would like to make a separate ruling today. Don't need that. Um, however, there was a decision uh, made on October 21st, 21 for each property. Um, Blueprint Capital Investment had a representative here who claimed that the properties were all vacant. 
during that time frame of 2021 and being staged for sale. Um, so we said uh, the, that was on September 30th. The properties were then set for to October 21st to obtain the water records, which are in front of you. So. I'm trying to remember, I don't. So the ones in question, uh, Nick, you're saying the water records are in front of us. So uh, is it mm -hmm. your opinion that there were there were were people in these units? Correct. The water department confirms there were consistent usage throughout the entire year for 2021. So that's the, these the other six properties, one, two, three, four, five, and six. There are two additional properties that appear on uh, that <coughs> list and that were set for the October 21st status date, but they do not appear on today's agenda. Okay. I did draft a uh, actually in the case. The 6001 to uh, the 6007. It's 7413 Marshall and 2736173rd did not appear on today's agenda, but were set for um, the other three uh, hearing dates. Marshall sold. Okay. And then 2736, yeah. 173rd is vacant, still is. I vaguely remember dealing with this. Um, go ahead, ma'am, you. All right, so 7413 Marshall is no longer um, owned by the, the current owner on file. I don't have the HUD on me, but that's why it's not on the agenda. It's right. been sold. Um, and then 273673rd, that's vacant, um, and it's still vacant. I was able to uh, register that for this year with the affidavit. Um, that's being prepped for sale as well. Um, I think the only thing I can have is that there was permits that were pulled to show that that was vacant as well for 2736, 173rd. Okay. Um, I don't think um, 6011, 6007. It's not on our list. Oh, okay. Because that was on the list as well. Um, it was new ownership prior, right when COVID did happen. And um, that was vacant. And one of the units is still vacant, 60. And I just applied for the affidavit this year for that. And then um, there were three new tenants within this year, but I also w was with the village and I gave them the updated information for that. And you, again, we're talking, which, which address? Um, it's not on the agenda, but that's 6005 through 11. It was new ownership and then COVID happened, we shut down. Well, I mean, yeah, with, that was Columbia. Columbia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Columbia. I mean, with all due respect, we just want to talk okay. about the properties that and are then, on the list today. Gotcha. All right. We need to know. Um, I think Mr. Farrell stated that yeah. someone had stated to him that these were all vacant Correct. properties up for sale. Correct. But so, the water department is showing that there's been water usage in some of those, if not right. all of them. Gotcha. We need to know. So I don't have any of that, but what I did do was talk to the owners um, previously for. Uh, the ones that have um, vacant, not vacant, um, tenants tenants that they didn't register for four years. That was from Property Boss converted over to um, Blueprint. Um, so I don't have any proof of that, but what I was coming here to ask for was a payment plan for that. Um, yeah, pretty much. The, the properties <clears throat> that owe multiple years uh, have been sent to Smith or Six office uh, so they can effectively work out a payment arrangement with their agreed with their office. Okay. Agreed with that. But the proper these six properties that we have the on the it. on the list yeah, here, two, three, from, and four. Aside from the first, yeah, two properties that are listed on the agenda, those mm -hmm. are all we're all here for 2021. Um, we were able to verify that the water usage did support occupancy at that time. So um, the claims that are made in September of 21 were refuted by yeah. you know, the usage of the water there. But in October, uh, October 21st, when the hearings were scheduled, nobody appeared and the board denied the appeal at that time for those properties. So there has been decisions. So again, these, I just want to understand. So these for final six properties, they're mm -hmm. all for 2021 only. Correct. And we know that there's been water usage there. They, and we had a hearing in October of 21. Right. These things were on the agenda to be heard at that time. Right. 
and no one showed. Correct. And I'm not sure, uh, with Blueprint Capital, I did, I was doing a search of the Secretary of State just to ensure, because mm -hmm. uh, property management companies are required to be um, licensed real estate um, agents. They are registered in, as an LLC in Illinois, but not Indiana. And we know that Blueprint actually had ownership of these properties for 2021? No. No, they don't have ownership. They're they just are, they are representing the owner uh, as a property. So if they collect rents or they draft leases in accordance with these rental properties that they manage, they should be uh, certified and licensed real estate agents in the state <coughs> of Indiana in order to conduct that business. Who is the owner, Nick? Um, they are listed on the actual uh, findings and decisions there. I don't know what's their name. They live in, this is the, Na the Naperville, Illinois? Correct, yeah, Naperville. The treasurer has a Naperville oh. address. Um, the Lake County Assessor has a Florida address. So it's just kind of. Do we know who was here in September saying that I they weren't? I was here in September. I didn't have here. the October. So that that was on me then. I didn't have that um, date to come. And she stayed with this. She's yeah. a blueprint capital yeah. property, so she manages the property yeah. mm -hmm. for the owners. It's the same owner for all the properties. So regardless of whether they were managing the property at the time, for instance, the previous years, the owner would still be responsible for those fees with them being occupied as rental properties. Mm -hmm. you know, um, now if she can represent the owner now, most likely that's probably why she was hired, because the previous property manager didn't do the job. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, that property owner owes the city of Hammond, runs registration fees, they back from 2015 for those two properties and for 2021 for the ones that are in front So who did we notify in October of 21 to be here? It was, well, she, she was here. It was me. I didn't get the notice, but um, so I brought it back. So since that was the case, when I talked to the building department, I was just like, all right, is there a break that can be ha can happen? I'm not saying that it's, I don't have any documentation other than, hey, you have that. Is there any type of... Um, well, what I'm trying to understand, though, is you were here in September. I was you here said in they were not occupied. Water uh, usage right. so says that's they that. were. Right. So were you... How did you not know they were occupied? So that was transferred over to me as well. Um, the, the files were transferred over to me. So as I'm getting the files together, this is what we had. So we had Missouri vacant ready for sale, 2736 vacant ready you know getting ready to sell so all of these things were coming in under me and then now i'm basically playing fix it <laughs> okay as a board we tend to yeah. give the first time exactly. we tend to give a break but because there's i, I don't want to call it a lie but there's gotcha. I, definitely some misinformation gotcha. going on and then when you didn't appear in october uh, i i got to tell you i'm inclined to impose the late fees for all the six properties okay um, you'll be able to work that out with Smith Sersick uh, at okay. some point. So, unless you have an objection, you guys? No. Just if I may, um, I, I'm not sure if the board needs to take any action today, as the decision has been made on October 21st of 2021 to deny the appeal uh, of the waiver. So, at this point, I believe uh, she's here in an attempt to, to reverse that decision. No, so if there is a decision uh, applied to the properties as of today's date. Did we have, Nick, did we apply late fees to all six properties though already? That's already been done? Yeah. Okay, then I'm, I'm comfortable with that then. Right. Then I'm gonna make, make a motion then to deny the request. Yeah, I was calling, I was coming here today for actually a payment plan. I gotcha, yeah. I understand. You can call our office. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so then I'm gonna, make, my motion is to deny her request. Okay. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, anything further, Mr. Farrell? Okay, item 10, old business. There is none on the agenda. Meeting's open to the public. Is there any public here? Nope. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I was trying to break it down. No, when you said the two, three, and four, then it hit me where oh, I, I, I was lost until then. But when you said 